Look, there's some disappointment with how earnings, or excuse me, how, how guidance shaped up. And I think that the main point is that Apple's changing the way it's going to disclose its business going forward. There's a lot of concern that iPhone units may be in, uh, may be in perpetual decline. But we think that the opportunity here is you're not, you're not paying a lot for growth. Apple's putting up 20% revenue growth, 41% EPS growth in an environment where iPhone units are flat. So we think that this opportunity where Apple will begin to disclose its services margin for the first time, um, this looks important. I think that Apple clearly intends to tell a compelling services margin story. Um, I think that the debate shifts there, and that's the, that's the big story for the next five years. Tim R. Curry, does it matter if iPhone units are in decline or are flat for the foreseeable future? I mean, uh, people who thought so probably would have bet against Apple even reaching the level where it is now. Arguably, this could put Apple in the position of focusing on product quality instead of product quantity and, and maybe investors focusing in that same direction. What are we really losing here uh, with this change in Apple's disclosure? That's right. Look, I mean, as an analyst, you, you know, of course, want more than less. But I think they have grown gross profit dollars by 16 percent over the past year, even when units are flat. And the you know stock has done very well, as you note, and yet it's still the most underowned. Uh, you know, it's the most underowned stock globally by active managers by a factor of three. Even though uh, you know gross profit has grown like this, and uh, units don't correlate with the stock. Gross profit growth is what correlates with the stock. So Tim O'Shea, at this point, uh, are you looking at this as an opportunity for Apple to really highlight what it does in services rather than in products? We think so. I mean, there's two big questions is what is the services margin and what is the trajectory of that margin? We think that margin is clearly improving and improving fast. Um, and we think that it's coming in at potentially double the gross margin today of the hardware business. And so if you look inside of the services business, it's App Store, it's Apple Music, it's Apple Pay, it's iCloud, Apple Care. These are all setting records. Apple. Um, the App Store alone, let's call it an $18 billion business next year, growing at 33%, extremely high margin, 75% of that coming from mobile gaming. That's a $150 billion business alone right there. You've got Apple Music, a third as many, um, over a third as many subscribers as Netflix. Netflix, a $130 billion company, you know, Spotify trading at $25 billion. You've got um, Apple Pay, four times, you know, transaction volume, 3x up year over year. I mean, this thing is, is growing four times faster than, than PayPal, which is valued at $100 billion. There's real value here. These are internet and software style businesses. There's a lot of leverage. So we'll see where that gross margin goes going forward. But, you know, we think that in the next four years, it's it's 50% of gross margin dollars coming from services. T to Mark um, Curie, that's the opportunity. Uh, to, that, to that point, uh, what's the important metric to look at if you're buying this company for services? Uh, do you believe in what other analysts have argued is a deceleration in app downloads? Is that about China gaming or is it something else? You know, there's oh, a lot asking, of... actually, Mark Curie, to give him a chance here. Tim? Yeah. Sorry, th th oh, so look, there's a I lot think... of moving parts here. Go ahead, Tim Curie. I I think the key is, is the growth in gross profit dollars and the ability to grow revenue. And I think that there still is sort of an underappreciation for you know, just, just, how, just how profitable services is. I see some you know, estimates out there where you know, people don't really get how profitable this business is. So I think by breaking it out, and if you, you know, look at the comps that this business ought to be comp to, these things trade at you know, high 20s, 30 times earnings. So if you, you, know, uh, you know, take that back to the uh, you know, phone business, uh, you get the most, you know, probably the planet's only recurring hardware business at basically a multiple that is equivalent right now to roughly HP's multiple. So it's, so it's pretty crazy. O'Shea, is this really a recurring hardware business? And to what extent do investors need to be worried about more volatility now that Apple is providing less data. I mean, like this, this report out of Japan, it used to be the unit sales would refute it uh, on something like iPhone sales. Now people are gonna be able to say, oh, well, maybe the revenue's a little higher, yep. but they're over-reliant on the high end and the mid-range is being eaten up by Chinese competitors. I, I mean, I can, I can write these rumor reports now. I won't, of course, never do that, but I know what they're going to say. Yeah, I mean, look, you're going to have investors who are going to be look, talking about units in the next five to ten years, right? That's not going to go away. Um, but, you know, what is, but it, I think that the new math, it's less about selling um, more iPhones a year, what's happening, um, upgrade cycles are being extended, 
people are, you know, the average um, iPhone is like, call it three years upgrade cycle at this point. So you're selling fewer iPhones, but in the cart, when you are buying an iPhone, the iPhone's coming through at a higher price, there's a higher attach rate of wearables like Apple Watch and AirPods, and you're getting a higher uh, penetration of services on top. So, so I mean, iPhone units, um, we model iPhone units basically in perpetual decline. It's still big enough to build a very big services business. You have a price target of 265. Uh, Mr. Arcuri, your price target is 240. Where do you see the headwinds for Apple? Look, I, I, I think that the um, headwind is kind of you know getting over the fact that they're not going to give you iPhone units anymore. I also think that there's a feeling that the you know company can't grow, and you know also I think that there is a general perception that as you hear about these cuts in the supply chain that you know that means that they're that they're you know just not selling units when really i think what's happening is is you know you're actually seeing the mix change so i think to the extent that there are cuts for the xr i think there are upward revisions on you know other models which is why i think that 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 you know a unit doesn't equal a unit the way that it used to because they've never had a stratification in pricing like they do today